G'day everybody. Uh, well, I'm going to tackle a job today that I've been putting off for some time now. I want to put uh, a chemical liner in this fuel tank. I've been dreading it, to be honest. Uh, I'm frightened I'm going to wreck my paintwork. And then before you ask, yes, I know I should have done this before we painted it. Uh, however, the product I've chosen, or it chose me, is uh, red, white and blue. It's a three-stage um, liner and sealer kit. <clears throat> so it actually turns out it was made in Tasmania up at Orford and it's distributed from the mainland. I purchased it through the local bike shop. Um, the first stage is a, is a cleaning stage so I want to get on with that and then you, then you seal it and then you put the liner in. Uh, it goes, it needs to, you need two days to do this job um, so I'm going to make a start and I think the first thing I need to do is actually read the instructions. Welcome to Basket Case. Now, first job is to seal everything up. Now, I've put Teflon tape on all of the bolts because they say that that works as a release agent. I've got, this is the actual fuel sender. This is just uh, bits of another one that I had lying around. And these are the uh, taps that I destroyed when I was um, putting the apple cider vinegar in the fuel tank. So I'm going to use them. I'm not worried if they get a bit of crap on them. Uh, they tell you to seal up all the holes, so I'm going to go ahead now and do that. All right, we've had a bit of a disaster with a damaged thread. So what's going on now is I'm going to try and fit a heli coil to it. shorten the heli coil up because one two three four one two I might have to take another coil off it won't need much comes a tricky bit trying to snap that bit off the end hopefully I haven't gone through too far nope <laughs> all right so where were we putting this back in that's a bit Well, that was a little distraction. Now, sadly for me, this is stuck on there and it ain't coming off. And I've used hydraulic sealant when I screwed that on. So, uh, it ain't coming out. They do tell you to cut a plastic, uh, a steel disc. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I've got a bit of plastic here. I might just trim that a bit more, and I'll just tape that on there. And hopefully that'll be enough to keep the crap from coming out. Cover the whole tank with blade wrap. Okay, the first part of the instructions say to dissolve the entire contents of this container into four litres of clean water. So I have four litres of clean water. I've 
mop the what I spilt. This is why I'm glad I covered that up. Um, and it says to swirl it around and then leave it sit for two hours uh, in different positions, two hours at a time. I'm going to throw a handful of nuts and bolts and bits and pieces for a little bit of mechanical action in there and then try and seal this up. And I've actually taken the time to write down what I put in so I know I get it all back out. Ah, oh, well, what a drama that was. I managed to spill it all over the tank. So I've stripped all the glad wrap off and washed it all with um, fresh water and reapplied the glad wrap. So now I've just got to position it in, I've given it a bit of a shake around in there and um, I've just got to position it in multiple positions for two hours at a time and then I finally leave it sit like this in this position overnight. So I'm going to prop it up on a bit of wood and, and get, uh, get, that, get that solution uh, in the areas in the tank where I think it needs it. Okay, welcome back to day two. So I had a few issues. I'm glad I took the time and trouble to do this. I was actually going to risk not putting a liner in this tank. There's pinholes in it, uh, one or two pinholes where it's rusted through from the inside. One of them's at the back uh, where this mount for the tank welds onto the, onto the uh, base. There was uh, a hole, a pinhole just in forward of the uh, fuel tap on the left hand side and also some leaks around the tap. So I'm pretty, pretty glad that I did this. So it's been soaking overnight uh, with the corrosive rust, de-rusting material in there and all those nuts and bolts. So the next step is to get that all out. I need to drain the tank. I need to rinse the tank properly with clean water. Make sure I get all my nuts and bolts back out of there. And then I need to add uh, part two, which is the red. And I need to add that to nearly two litres of, or to make up two litres of boiling water. Uh, and then we rinse it out and that's to neutralise it. So that prevents it from rusting again. And then when we've done that, uh, and we drain that out, we let it dry, and then we add the, uh, the final step, step the, uh, the liner itself. two litres of really hot water. I'm just going to try and recover and nuts and bolts. So I've got a couple there. Let's keep fishing. Vigorously move around for 10 to 15, 10, 5 to 10 minutes. All right, so I've now removed the, the taps, I've drained it and um, opened it all up. And now I just need to wait for it to dry before we can do the third step which is the um, adding the liner. So let's let it dry out and we'll come back and hit it again. Okay, it's day three of this task. Um, it's actually the day seven because you gotta let it dry out properly. So I've just let it dry out for a week. Uh, step three, we need to shake this white bottle and mix uh, to mix in the color and then add it to the jar of blue resin. And then we use a stirrer to make sure that the two are fully blended. Um, let it sit for two minutes, mix it again, and then pour it into the tank through the filler neck and uh, move it all about. So, without further ado, I've got a bucket of clean water there too, and I've, I've re 
glad wrap the tank because it's this stage where you need that release agent on your screws and they tell you not to spill it on the paintwork. In fact, the comment is it is best to avoid this. So without further ado, we'll uh, give this a good mix up, blend it, tip it in and start moving it all about. Just looks like fiberglass resin. Let that, let that sit for two minutes and then come back and stir it again and you can see it's mixed fairly thoroughly. Give it another mix. I think I'm going to need every last drop of this. All right, wish me luck. This stuff stays liquid for about an hour, so you've got plenty of time. I just wanted to check what the viscosity was like. I'm just going to keep moving it around. Okay, I'm going to take the uh, top off it now and have a poke around in there and see what I can see. Uh, it's going to be very hard for you to see, I think. You can see it's uh, quite heavier in the bottom of the tank than it is elsewhere. But, you know, it did everything it said it would on the tin. Uh, all I can do now is wait. And uh, you've got to let it cure for a week now before you can put petrol in it. So I'm just going to let it tack off. It, it take, it's dry for an hour, they claim, and I reckon it's been close to that. Um, but on the spatula, etc., it's still a bit tacky. So I'm going to let it um, get to the point where I'm confident it's not going to move around anymore. And um, I will remove the, the taps. It says to do that while, while it's still green. So I'll take everything out back out of the tank, let it sit for a week. Um, and hopefully by then I'll be in a position where I'm wanting to put some petrol in it. Uh, but I'm not in a rush at this stage because I'm still waiting for parts for the carburetors. All right, well, that's it. Um, red, white and blue or any other type of polymer fuel lining, I suppose. Um, yeah, I, I needed it. Otherwise, this is just one of the, you know, the world's most elaborate piece of wall art if I can't get it to seal up. Uh, I, I think it's, it's at the limits. This fuel tank's at the limits in terms of size um, for this product. You want to be careful that whatever product you buy has uh, enough capacity for the fuel tank that you're using. Um, some of them, if you've got a really small tank, you can recover <coughs> the resin out of it, uh, you know, the excess resin out of it, but not this one. Um, yeah, so all right, let's see how it goes. Um, I'm hoping that I don't need to do it all over again and put a second uh, second lot of resin in there because it's not, not that cheap. I can't remember what I paid, but it wasn't overly cheap. All right, well, thanks for tuning in. Um, good luck with your project. Stay tuned, subscribe, and we'll be back. Bye for now. Well, look what we've got here. Brakes are on the bike. So let's have a look at what hell I had to go through to get that done. Welcome to Basket Case.